Hi, are you thinking of moving to Indonesia as a family with kids? Then this video is for you as we're going to explain briefly the options for schools in Indonesia and more importantly, how much it will cost you to send your kids to school there. So let's get started. If you are moving to Indonesia with children, then you have three options when it comes to sending your kids to school. One, the public schools. Two, the national plus schools. And three, the international schools. Public school is free and every child in Indonesia must be able to go to school. However, unfortunately, public schools in Indonesia are not the best. And despite the policies that the Indonesian government has implemented over the years, the level of education in Indonesia has not improved. No, not really. We read all kinds of papers that explain why the education system is far below average compared to other Asian countries. Reasons are the level of skills of the teachers, of course. Motivation of the teachers, the students, poor management, corruption, and the list goes on. Schools in larger cities in, let's say, Jakarta, do perform better than schools in rural areas such as those on Kalimantan or Sulawesi Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Indonesian parents who have children at public schools and who can afford it usually arrange after-school tutoring while others send their kids to private schools. These private schools are the National Plus schools and International schools. So let's start with the National Plus schools. Yeah. National Plus schools have a more international based curriculum instead of the national one. Classes are often in Indonesian and English and offer more subjects than required by the Indonesian Ministry of Education. Sometimes the teachers are native English speakers and you'll find that there are more opportunities to continue studying because some of these schools offer Cambridge International Examinations. Yeah, and National Plus schools in Indonesia tend to have a lot of similarities to international schools. So sometimes it is difficult to distinguish between these two types of schools. For example, when you look up online for the list of international schools, then you can find 130 of them in six different cities in Indonesia. Jakarta alone has 61 international schools, Bali 19, wow. Surabaya 14 and Medan 10. That's a lot. Yeah, but once you look closer at the list of international schools, you'll see names such as the Independent School of Jakarta, ACG School Jakarta, Bali Island School, and Pro Education School. Yeah. None of them use the word international in their name, making it difficult to determine if it's an international or a national plus school. Yeah. And that was the whole intention of the Ministry of Education in 2015. You know, they forbid schools to use the word international in their name. If I understood correctly, one of the reasons was that national plus schools were also using the word international in their name, so they could increase their tuition fees. Pretty smart, right? But another reason was that the number of local Indonesian students at international schools was also increasing. Yeah, for instance, today the British school in Jakarta has 62% international students and 38% local wow. students. This is the same for the independent school of Jakarta, where 60% are international and 40% are local. So for this reason, it became mandatory for international schools to hire local staff to teach subjects in Indonesian culture and language with additional subjects such as religious study, studies and history since more Indonesian children were going to these international schools. Yeah. Other requirements were that international teachers have to have at least five years of experience, right? Mm -hmm. Plus, they have to be proficient in Indonesian. Wow. While the international schools had to adjust to these requirements, these schools still have a very good reputation. Schools which are obviously international schools are mostly British oriented, while 18% is around you know, American oriented. However, these schools have often reached their maximum capacity since wealthy local Indonesians are attending these schools too. So don't expect classes with a small number of kids. 
So what school is the best for your child? So initially we thought that expat children were not allowed to go to public schools, but we were wrong. That said, you will hardly find an expat kid at local at a local Indonesian school, yeah, except if you are going to live in a rural area, of course. Mm -hmm. The language barrier and the level of education is the main reason why expat families in Indonesia will go to a National Plus or international school. Yeah, that's right. Whatever private school you choose, make sure that the level of education your child receives will enable him or her to compete on a global level. If that's what you aim for, of course. Check if it has proper international accreditation, such as the IB program, which is a program that's acknowledged by leading universities worldwide. Also try to find out which universities the students go to once they graduate. You can of course check online for more information on these schools. So ask around in expat Facebook groups and more importantly, visit the school when possible if you have some time. So what are the costs of enrolling your child in a school in Indonesia? As mentioned earlier, if you look up the schools online, it is not always obvious what type of school it exactly is. We found a great website that lists all the international schools in Indonesia, and we will add the link uh, of this website in the description box below. The schools on this site that are obviously international schools provide all the useful information while others haven't. Yeah, we also noticed that the renowned international schools have their websites in English or for example French, you know, if it's a French international school. And also they've clearly listed their tuition fees, so that really comes in handy. Mm -hmm. While the other schools, which we think are National Plus schools, do not provide detailed information on their tuition fees on their website. That's a bit weird. Anyways. Usually these schools also have information on the website in English and Indonesian. Yeah, so the information that we were able to get on tuition fees is mainly from international schools. And coming from the Netherlands and being familiar with public schools only, we immediately thought they, that they were pretty crazy expensive. Yeah. But I wow. guess you can't compare a Dutch school with an international no, school. No. An international school is like an institution alone where your child will spend most of their time and the international influences and options are just incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. But still, we are really surprised by all the extra cost. Mm. Just to give you an example, the independent school of Jakarta Okay, this is considered uh, the best. Uh, their tuition fee ranges from around 7,800 to 25,000, depending on which class your child is in. But on top of that, there's a yearly registration fee of around $3,000. You also have to pay for materials, which are around 800. But you are not finished yet. <laughs> there are additional costs of lunches, iPads, and school trips. Mm -hmm. the, the British school in Jakarta, the North Anglia School and the ACG School in Jakarta have similar tuition fees. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but we get it, especially if you want your child to receive an international curriculum that is also officially accredited by relevant authorities in your own home country. Yeah. But in Indonesia, there are also, of course, international schools that are not British or American oriented, such as the French and German international schools. Yeah. One example, for instance, is the French Life School in Jakarta. They have annual fees starting from 8,000 to kindergarten, you know, just for kindergarten, mm -hmm. and 12,500 for 12th grade, you know, if you're Indonesian or if the French nationality. Yeah. For other nationalities, the fee is slightly higher. Yeah. Or you have the North Jakarta Intercultural School, where Indonesian, English, and Mandarin are main languages. The tuition fee is around 3,800 for kindergarten to 17,000 for 12th grade. The tuition fee for international schools in Bali, such as the ba Bali Island School, is somewhat cheaper and can range from 6,500 US dollars for kindergarten to 20,000 US dollars for 12th grades. Yeah. With an exception for the famous Green Bali School. That, that one is a bit more expensive. Yeah, that's for sure. This is excluding additional fees, such as registration and additional exams. Mm -hmm. So some international schools are small scale, such as the Skywalker Academy with just 60 students with a tuition fee of around $3,000.
You know, that's only for kindergarten and $5,000 for 12th grade. As for National Plus schools, there is a bit more information when it comes to Bali. The Regent School Bali is well known, but unfortunately we couldn't find any information on their tuition fees. The Yat Mika is considered a National Plus school, however it's said that their fees are just the same as the international schools, which is around $4,000 for kindergarten and $7,000 for 12th grade. So again, here you can see it's hard to tell what type of school it exactly is. Yeah. Yeah, and if we would settle in Bali, then we will likely choose an area nearby Sanur to live. Mm -hmm. So then there will be yeah. the Bali Island School, which would be around 15,000 a year. Gandhi Memorial International School uh, nearby yeah. Sanur. Or the Sanur Independent School, which both have a tuition fee of around 5,000 US dollars. So if we would consider Ubud, then we have the Palangi with a yearly fee of 5,500 US dollars. All these prices are all excluding the additional costs, such as enrollment fees mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. We checked also some international schools in Lombok, as this is the island we might be interested in as well. We came across the Mandalika International School, where the tuition fees would be around 4,000 a year for our seven-year-old son. At the National Plus School, the Sekola Nusa Alam, we think the tuition fee will be around 4,500. With all this in mind, we expect to pay around 500 US dollars a month. But let's make it 600 US dollars to cover yeah. all the extra costs. <laughs> so this is just for one child who would be around nine years old. Yeah. So how to choose from this whole list of schools, right? I guess the choice of school depends on your budget. Is it a company sponsoring the school or do you need to finance it yourself? The age of your child or kids, some schools don't have a high school. Where do you want to live and for how long? You know, essential questions. As some of these schools have a minimum enrollment period. I mean, do they provide extra lessons for non-English speakers as well? Type of curriculum, teaching philosophy, school facilities, you know, and so on and so on. But whatever the cost, the high tuition fee should not limit you from moving to Indonesia. No. If it doesn't fit your budget, you can always consider homeschooling or long distance schooling. This is very common for expats in Indonesia as well. Yeah. If these types of schooling suit you and your child, then that would be a terrific option. Yeah, it would be a great option. Uh, we do wonder about the social aspects though of expat kids not going to school. Moving to a new country is already a huge change, let alone building up a new life, which includes meeting new friends. Going to school makes it easier, but then again, there are many options to connect with other kids. You know, you can go through sports, through camps, and so on. Yeah, I agree. School is a great way to meet new people, not mm -hmm. only for the children, but for their parents as well. So yeah. that's it for today. We hope we have provided useful information that will help you prepare for your move to Indonesia. If you yeah. have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comment section below this video. Yes. And if you want to see more of our videos, please like and subscribe to our channel as we will be posting more on the cost of living in Indonesia very soon. So thank you very much for watching and bye-bye.